Prince William gets candid about mental health, his family, and Taylor Swift on his Time to Walk audio tour. We all want to stay fit. We all want to go for walks. We like to keep active. Doctors tell us it's good for us. Well, no one says how good it is to keep mentally fit. It's so important. Prince Harry encourages people to quit their jobs as Meghan scores a big legal victory. It, what it mostly does is sends this message that these practices aren't acceptable and that um, not just are they hurtful and harmful, but they're illegal. And more from our interview with Christopher Anderson, who reveals what Princess Diana thought of Charles and Camilla's relationship and where Prince Harry stands with Duchess Kate. The strain is undeniable. I mean, obviously with their you know, their husbands at war. I think Meghan and, and Kate can respect each other, but I don't think it's going to be a, a, it has been a warm and fuzzy relationship at all. We've got that plus so much more in today's Royally Us. Hey guys, Christina Garibaldi here with Christine Ross, royal expert and royal writer. Hi, Christine, how are you? I am doing well, how are you? I'm doing good. I know we have a lot of uh, royal news to get to this week. Prince William did this really cool um, audio walking tour that we learned a lot about him. So I'm excited for us to dive into it. There's so much to unpack just from that alone. <laughs> Totally. Yes. And we're going to have more from our interview with Christopher Anderson coming up. So a lot to get to. But before we do that, let's check in and see what the royal viewers had to say about last week's show, kicking it off with Miss Katz, who said the bottom line, the comments hurt Harry, no matter who made it. Also seems Williams was working against Harry from the start. I don't believe Harry tried to get in touch with William. I feel Harry is happy and moving forward. And this, of course, was um, our conversation with Christopher and how Prince Charles maybe allegedly made those comments about Archie and how William defended Prince Charles uh, in the aftermath. So yeah, I'm sure that if this is all true, that those comments definitely did hurt Harry. I think it's, you know, it's a good point that it kind of, it doesn't matter if it hurt his, you know, if it hurt him and that's still valuable. But then I think this kind of circles back to that's something that they should have dealt with privately as a family. Mm -hmm. You know, if someone says something that you don't like, privately say, hey, that, you know, kind of upset me. And right. again, maybe this is something that should have been dealt with, you know, between family. Oh, totally. All right. Next one goes to Daniel Wallace says the Christmas photo is a weird thing to be upset about because she didn't have photos of her other children and grandchildren. Makes a good point. She has a lot of other great grandchildren and children that were not featured in the photo. So it really shouldn't, maybe Harry shouldn't have taken it to heart if he, if he really did. Yeah, that's a great point. Actually. I hadn't considered mm -hmm. that, that she has such a large extended family, especially, and not everyone can, you know, not everyone makes it onto that, you know, Christmas message. Right. Yeah. Otherwise it would be a huge, huge yeah. line of <laughs> photographs. <table. laughs> totally. <laughs> um, and lastly, uh, Natalie says Charles paid them 2 million after then leaving the royal family how much payout would a 37 year old married man want from his father let's not forget harry is already a rich man he not only has what his mother left but also the queen mom left a substantial amount to him now this was after prince charles financially cut off um harry after he left the royal family also a good point he wasn't lacking in funds <laughs> Yes. Yeah. I, it's, it's so interesting and people can take money. So, so personally, and it can really, you know, um, become almost a personal affront when it really probably wasn't. But again, maybe this was something that should have been dealt with privately between family members and not on a special with Oprah. Um, totally. Yeah. No, definitely a lot of, uh, he definitely aired a lot of dirty laundry that probably should have, um, stay behind closed doors, but gives us something to talk about. <laughs> yeah, true. true. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, let's get into our Royal Roundup and kick it off with Prince William, who teamed up with Apple Fitness for their Time to Walk series. And he opened up about uh, his mother, Princess Diana, Taylor Swift and mental health. So take a quick listen. And we all need to go through a process of understanding why, rather than just give in to those feelings and say, listen, it's me, I'm, I'm the problem. It's not, it really isn't you and you're not alone and it's okay. Yeah, like we said uh, up at the top, this was a really candid conversation that we learned a lot about, um, some really personal moments to some emotional moments and also some lighthearted moments too. So where exactly did this walk take place? So he was, well, it's, it's such an interesting program because he mm -hmm. is actually walking around. Yeah. That's the whole idea. And he was walking around the Sandringham estate, mm -hmm. um, kind of, you know, whether he was at his own house at Emmer Hall or whether he was more, you know, closer to the Queen's estate, it's kind of, you know, he's having a nice country walk, which I, I think is that. so lovely. 
Um, and it was so nice of him to share these, you know, memories. It really was candid. It was so down to earth and personal. And I loved all the things that he shared from, you know, memories with his mother to his personal um, experiences with mental health to his, you know, kids at the breakfast table. And I think that it was so relatable. Yeah. And I think he's doing such a good job of being relatable. Yeah. I love this series. It's a, it's a really fun idea too. I mean, what was yeah. the most uh, surprising revelation for you? I think, well, Prince William's music taste has always interested me. He's always been a really big fan of Linkin Park and kind uh -huh. of, so to hear that, you know, his like get up and go song in the morning is Thunderstruck by ACDC. <laughs> it's just not what you imagine the future king, you know, like playing, you know, first thing in the morning. <laughs> totally. I, I That was kind of uh, took me by surprise too. I absolutely love that. I'm like, oh, really? Thunderstruck. Interesting yeah, choice. It's an interesting choice. Interesting choice. <laughs> I did love um, what he said about uh, Princess Diana how, you know, he fondly remembered uh, he, Harry, and uh, his mom driving the car together and she would blast Tina Turner's the best. And you can kind of just like picture that happening as like they were driving up to school and she's kind of belting at the top of her lungs this song. And obviously it's right. a, a song that definitely means a lot to him. And I, he talks about how, you know, it almost ties back to the mental health conversation because when he was in the car, Mm -hmm. enjoying that time he wasn't dreading going back to school and it was it turned what could be a negative experience into a positive experience and mm -hmm. I he, he talks about that about how he was able to sort of tune it out and get lost into the music yeah yeah and uh speaking of music I mean he had that moment with Taylor Swift that he <laughs> talked about you know with uh, Taylor and John Bon Jovi and Taylor kind of touching his arm and being like let's get up and sing and I, I guess she had this magic touch on him he was like okay <laughs> I'll do it and I think he's still <laughs> mortified about it to this day <laughs> I think so he's also under Taylor Swift's spell as are so many <laughs> so many um mm. but I think that that was so great and that became such an iconic moment for mm. Prince William and his work um and I think really charmed everybody so to hear that it was sort of a spur of the moment thing and he didn't get stuffy and say oh no 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 you know he kind of jumped in and was in on the fun yeah kind of let his guard down a little bit um but we also spoke about how he talked about um, his mental health a lot. And he opened up about a traumatic experience that he faced when he was an air ambulance pilot, kind of piggybacks off of what we were talking about last week too. Um, he spoke about this, but it, it was almost like um, a shift happened to him when he experienced this uh, traumatic event with this young boy who got injured after he was hit by a car. And it really kind of uh, changed his perspective on things. Yeah, he said it was like he felt a key opened a lock and all of these emotions were suddenly very, you know, um, much in the open and very raw. And he said he felt that the whole world was dying. Mm -hmm. And after such a traumatic experience, I think that just, you know, something oh, it opened the floodgates for him. But he spoke about how he was able to get help. Um, and there was mental health support through his work with the Air Ambulance Corps and sort of spoke about how important it is to get help, but also that those resources are readily available when someone needs them mm -hmm. and that it's okay. You know, it's okay to not be okay. And it's okay to seek those resources. Yeah. And he kind of spoke about like what, how he did last week when he would kind of go home and kind of try to shut it off and not talk about those feelings that he was kind of going through and how that really took a toll on his mental health too. So it's good that he got the help that he needed and is encouraging so many others to do the same. So um, definitely, definitely, if you haven't listened to the chat, go back and do it and do so. It's, it's really cool to see him in a different light. It is. It was yeah. such a nice conversation. Yeah. Um, well, speaking of mental health, Prince Harry, of course, um, has been talking about this for years as well. And he's actually encouraging people to quit their jobs if it doesn't bring you happiness. Uh, the Duke of Sussex spoke with the Fast Company magazine and said that job resignations during the pandemic aren't all that bad. I kind of agree with this. If the things aren't bringing you happiness, you should change it. Yes, he kind of he said that the you know the last um, eighteen months, two years has brought a lot of self awareness to people mm -hmm. who are saying, "Hey, you know, life is short, and I don't enjoy this." Yeah. You know, and and helping them to reassess. But he also talked about how there was um, an awakening of social problems that were mm -hmm. always there. And especially tying back to what um, Megan has been campaigning for with paid leave for families. He talked about how, you know, the, sometimes the situations weren't working and how many 
women were in the workplace and had to leave because of childcare and things like that. And these issues were always there, but he said that this time has been just an awakening of problems that um, we really need to address. Oh yeah. And I think it's so true. I mean, I know a few people that have, you know, wanted to do complete career changes during this time or decided that they just want to stay home and be with their families. And, you know, you kind of, it did, it pressed the pause button for so many people and people really had to reassess what was important and, you know, and kind of striking that work-life balance and people, you know, we put so much pressure on our careers here all the time that you kind of put everything else on the back burner. And now it feels like people hopefully will have more of an equal balance. As right. as and is. I think, yeah, yeah. <laughs> now, um, I think it was interesting. I think he was somewhat talking from his own experience yeah. to then, you know, finding what makes you happy mm-hmm. and leaving toxic, you know, situations that you perceive to be toxic. Um, but I think it was great that he could kind of look at other people's situations and really empathize with kind of the common man or woman who's going mm-hmm. through these experiences. Yeah, totally. It's a, it's an interesting read. And like you said, probably pulling from his own experience as well. So, um, well, let's move on to Meghan Markle because she scored a big legal win when three judges ruled that a British newspaper breached her privacy by reproducing parts of the letter she wrote to her estranged father, Thomas Markle. In a statement, she said, this is a victory, not just for me, but for anyone who has ever felt scared to stand up for what's right. While this win is precedent setting, what matters most is that we are now collectively brave enough to reshape a tabloid industry that conditions people to be cruel and profits from the lies and pain that they create. So yeah, this is a big legal win for Megan. She's been doing, uh, fighting this for a number of years now, it seems like. And um, yeah, kind of came out on top. I think it, like uh, people thought this could either go either way for a, for a while because um, she had a couple setbacks, but yeah, no, the judges ruled in her favor. And I think that that's so wonderful for her. And I agree that it really, it, what it mostly does is sends this message that these practices aren't acceptable and that um, not just are they hurtful and harmful, but they're illegal. Yeah. And I think that that's so important as you know, the news industry really makes a big shift in how it covers news and what it, what is and isn't, you know, um, public property, so to speak. Mm-hmm. And I hope that this is the end of this story although I've heard that they're considering moving the case to this you know appealing again and moving it to the Supreme Court but I'm hoping that she can kind of find peace and and close the door on this terrible situation I hope so this has been like just so drawn out and so just like (laughs) let it go let it die you're right it's been years and years Mm -hmm. so hopefully you know maybe this will change the way tabloid culture kind of kind of works especially in the UK because they are just ruthless when it comes to the the royal family yeah it's unbelievable really all right well now it is time to spill the royal tea and it appears that Prince Charles and Prince Harry may be opening the lines of communication a source did tell us weekly that they are speaking but they have obviously a lot of issues to work through (laughs) I mean um Christopher Anderson did tell us last week that Charles and Harry really hadn't spoken in about 18 months um now we're hearing that maybe they're speaking again obviously we don't exactly know we're not on the phone with them we um but i i hope that the lines of communication may be opening a little bit more yeah i hope so as well i think you know especially new babies can also often yeah. mm-hmm. you know um lead to olive branches to to um strengthen old family relationships so to speak uh i know that prince harry obviously is very um passionate but he finds importance in taking care of his mental health I'm sure that he's spoken to someone about this and maybe Charles has as well and they've sort of said that you know mending this relationship is important to both of them Mm -hmm. so I'm not sure we're going to see any you know um joint engagements anytime soon but hopefully they are talking and able to you know at least start to mend those fences I hope so and until Harry's book comes out and then then we're all back to where we once were (laughs) all right well now it is time to break down the royal rules and we are going to give you some more of our conversation with Christopher Anderson of course he is the author of the new book brothers and wives inside the private lives of William Kate Harry and Meghan so here he is talking about Diana's thoughts on Charles and Camilla's relationship and where Harry stands with Duchess Kate take a look I have to ask about Kate and Harry's relationship now because, you know, they were very close at the time. And, you know, Harry was the one that, you know, helped William uh, get back together with Kate when they broke up. Um, So, you know, I'm sure that that has to be hard to watch that relationship dissolve as well. Yes. And I think, uh, you know, Harry always was always close to Kate and he always said that she was the sister he never had. He got very emotional at the wedding of of Harry and uh, uh, 
I'm sorry, Harry got very emotional at William and Kate's wedding and, and cried about that fact that he described her as his sister. And she got emotional too. Uh, you know, there's, they had, they've always had this banter. They were just similar senses of humor. And they both, I think, knew that they had a responsibility to William, who took himself very much more seriously than they were. Um, but the strain is undeniable. I mean, obviously, with their you know, their husbands at war, I think Megan and, and Kate can respect each other. But I don't think it's going to be a, a, it has been a warm and fuzzy relationship at all. They have not been close now. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so much of Harry's motivation um, to protect his wife and his child and to make these big changes in his family seems to stem from the tragic death of his mother. And I noticed in the book, you had some interesting insights on Diana's mindset at the time of her death um, regarding Charles and Camilla. Oh, yes. I think finally she'd come to the conclusion that they had a great love affair, you know, that, that she had to admit that, this, that these were the two people who were in fact meant for each other. And after all the pain and the, the craziness, you know, created by the, their Camilla and Charles's affair, and, and, and in a sense, it kind of destroyed Diana. Um, she had to tell her sons that, look, if you can ever find a love like they have, uh, hold on to it, because, you know, if, you've got, if you find your soulmate. Um, and by the way, I think, you know, I mean, her ghost kind of like Diana's ghost kind of looms over everything, hangs over everything. <laughs> uh, she's, um, if she were alive today, I think uh, she'd be torn because she'd be very happy that they, these guys are married to women that they obviously love, that they have gorgeous children, that they, these guys are great fathers and they're you know, active in important charities and things like that. But causes that, by the way, that she would, did support. But, you know, uh, she, she would say that William and Harry, she would say William and Harry are my revenge. And by that, what she meant was that they would both lead the monarchy, you know, uh, into the future. And uh, she absolutely would not have liked Harry turning his back on his birthright so that he could sign deals with Netflix. You know, I don't think <laughs> that's been my personal view. Um, although she did turn down a movie role from Kevin Costner once, you know, at the very, toward the end of life, he offered... And seriously, he he offered her uh, the role in the sequel to uh, the body uh, the the bodyguard, you know, the great movie. Well, he was making a sequel to it, and he offered her ten million dollars, and uh, she was really seriously toying with the idea. She never would have done it because I think she would have thought that was too much. But um, he and and the script landed on his desk the day she died. I was going to talk about bizarre coincidence, but he spoke with her on the phone, and she was taking it very seriously. And she talked it over with William, and William, I think William was, you know probably would have urged you to do it uh, once you got the script. But anyway, uh, it's a very different world we're living in today. Yeah. And is it true that William was encouraging her to get married to Haza Khan? Because I think you write in the book that she wanted to secretly marry him and that William was supportive in that decision. Uh, yeah, I, well, you know, you know, for a long time, she relied on William for advice, even as a little boy. That's one of the things that was the kind of, their friends thought was odd that she would discuss her love affairs and everything with, with this, what she called my wise little old man, talking about things that mother should never talk to, mm -hmm. uh, you know, with her son. But anyway, she trusted him and in his opinion, um, you know, yeah, I think he was, uh, you know, for that, that particular relationship. But whether or not he would have pushed her into marriage, I'm not so, so sure. Um, and the Doty situation, uh, you know, she she made it pretty clear that she did not intend to marry him, but she certainly intended to live, you know, in his house with him uh, in Malibu. Uh, she would have spent six months a year, maybe at the most, outside of London with the boys who, who was about to start doing that. But she never would have, you know, uprooted everybody and, and turned her back on on England. That never would have happened. Yeah, I, you know, it's. Uh... Going back to Harry and Kate, it seems like, you know, they had such a lovely relationship. So for them to be strained as well, hopefully everybody just gets back together and we have one big happy family again. I know it's so hard because I think they used to be so close and it must be mm. really difficult to have that friction in what was, you know, once a really wonderful relationship. Definitely. All right, well, let's move on to our Royal History Moment of the Week and the Royal Family is getting ready for Christmas. The preparations are officially underway. They posted um, some photos of some Christmas decorations. And of course, it looks absolutely beautiful. It's so beautiful. They shared photos of the Palace of Holyrood House, which mm -hmm. is the Queen's official residence in Scotland. Mm -hmm. 
And I mean, no one does Christmas like the royal family does with the trees and the decorations and especially in the splendor of these castles and palaces. It's just, it is quintessential fairy tale Christmas. I can't wait. To, I can't wait to see the rest of the photos of like Windsor Castle, of Kensington Palace. No. It's just going to look beautiful. They go all out and, um, you know, kudos to everybody that kind of puts those together too, because that's a lot of work and um, they do, do a spectacular job every single year. Ever. It's, it's so magical. Before we wrap up, we have to check in on our royal kids. And Prince William, during that conversation, um, his audio talk, he revealed what causes the massive fights between Charlotte and George at the breakfast table. Um, of course, it has to do with music, which I love. Yes, I love this story. Um, so I, it, it would appear, according to Prince William, that every morning, the George and Charlotte take turns um, choosing the music for the breakfast mm -hmm. table. And I love this because apparently they're not watching cartoons on iPads, like, you know, some families. <laughs> um, right, totally. But, yeah. <laughs> um, but it's so, so now they take turns, but I guess they still argue over whose turn it is. Um, and they apparently Princess Charlotte loves Shakira's music. And there's a lot of waka waka playing at the, around the breakfast table. And I love that Shakira actually responded to this and mm -hmm. said that, you know, I'm so glad you love the music. Uh, but it was such a wonderful, you know, very relatable family mm -hmm. moment of siblings bickering at the breakfast table. I love that. I think that is so cute. I think that's adorable. What, what music's playing at your breakfast table all the time? Oh my God. We play a lot of the Lumineers. <laughs> oh, I like that. I like that. Yeah. My, my daughter's obsessed with Moana. So it's Moana all the time. So we yeah, literally, yeah, literally listen to Moana that, all day long. <laughs> all day long. We, um, I'm, a, I am, I love music. I'm really passionate mm -hmm. about it, but that means that I'm really strict and don't let those play those, you know, musical, um, what am I saying? Thinking like the Disney songs don't yes. pop up too often. I kind of like a cultural education. So we do a lot of Queen, a lot of Lumineers, a lot of Beatles. I love that. I love that. Yes. I, I should probably turn the Moana off and try to <laughs> um, introduce her to a few more other things. Right. <laughs> but sometimes it's just not worth the fight. Nope. nope. <laughs> totally. Well, Christine, thank you so much for running down all things Royals with me as always. Yep. This was so fun. I love chatting this week so much about music and about mental yes. health. Totally. It was a good, a good episode. Hopefully everybody enjoyed it. Please comment, please subscribe, and we will see you guys next week. Have a good week. Bye. Bye.